Today we'll be speed testing Windows 10 and Windows 11. What impact does upgrading have on performance? Well, we're about to find out. So, starting things off with the startup test, I wanted to take this time to explain what hardware we're working with because it has changed from my previous videos. We're using a Dell Latitude 7390 with an i5-8350U CPU with integrated graphics, 8 gigs of RAM, and this time we're using 128 gigs of SSD storage. This was all mainly done to supplement Windows 11's system requirements, so we're making this as fair as possible. Anyways, back to the comparison, Windows 10 does take the win here, however, Windows 11 was not too far behind. As always, startup doesn't determine everything, but it can give us a rough idea of what to expect. And here's a quick look at how much storage both operating systems take up with the same pre-installed programs. Windows 10 takes up exactly 40 gigabytes of storage, while Windows 11 takes up 41.1 gigabytes, giving Windows 10 the win here by a mere 1.1 gigabytes. Moving on to memory management, I tested this in two ways. First, I measured the amount of RAM being used while nothing was open in the background. Windows 10 took up 2.6 gigabytes of RAM, while Windows 11 took up 3.1 gigabytes. That's a 500 megabyte difference, and this can be especially significant if you don't have that much RAM in the first place. Next, I wanted to do a Chrome test where I tried to open as many tabs as possible in Google Chrome until we hit 5 gigabytes in Task Manager and we can see the consequences of Windows 11 taking up more system RAM. Windows 10 got to 24 tabs and Windows 11 got to 20 tabs. Another win for Windows 10. Next up is the battery test. Here I just ran a bunch of programs in the background that would drain the battery as quickly as possible. Speeding things up here, remember both were unplugged at almost the exact same time. Windows 10 takes the win here once again. Windows 11 is falling short by just a minute and a half. If you're curious, I've also provided the total amount of time it took for both machines to die. Remember this was a highly intensive battery test so I'd imagine in the real world the scale would be even larger. Up next is audio editing, here I loaded an Audacity project with a few mp3 files and an audio effect and exported everything into one WAV file. After running the export, Windows 11 comes out on top for the first time in this video with Windows 10 coming in just milliseconds behind. I wanted to add these lightweight tests just in case the difference in speed was that large, but in this case, that didn't really happen. But now let's move on to something a bit heavier, and that's video editing. So things have changed in this department as well, instead of using some random video editor, we're using something a bit more well known, and that is DaVinci Resolve 17. This is a pretty simple project, a video with some audio in the background at 1080p 30fps, but it suffices for this hardware and our purposes. So speeding things up here because it does take quite a while, Windows 10 renders the entire project first with Windows 11 coming in about 43 seconds later. And just like the battery test, here's the total amount of time it took for both operating systems to render the file if you're curious. Moving forward to application opening, I wanted to do a variety of different applications for this section, starting off with a classic Windows application control panel. Windows 10 does come in first and Windows 11 comes in about a half second later. Let's also try Windows Settings, which is a modern Windows application, and once again, Windows 10 comes out on top with Windows 11 having a similar delay to Control Panel. Let's do something a bit heavier, Microsoft Word 2019. This application has very long loading times, but nevertheless, Windows 10 loads up the entire application first, but Windows 11 wasn't too far behind considering how long it usually takes to load Word. Let's move away from Microsoft for a little bit and try opening a PDF file with Adobe Reader, and similar results, Windows 10 comes in first with a small gap in Windows 11. Finally, let's try opening a video file via VLC media player and surprise surprise Windows 10 opens before Windows 11 with a small delay. That's kind of funny actually Windows 10 opened every single application before Windows 11 and the small gap between both was almost the exact same for every application. What a coincidence. And I know this isn't entirely OS dependent, but I wanted to quickly do a web page loading test with three websites. First was YouTube.com, and Windows 11 fully loads the entire website first with about a half second delay on Windows 10. This was then followed by Apple.com, where Windows 11 takes the win here as well. Again, Windows 10 having this half second delay. Finally was Google.com, and they pretty much loaded them at almost the exact same time. Maybe Windows 10 came in a millisecond or two earlier. Okay, well, let's try something else, something like file transfer. I loaded a USB flash drive with a bought a 4 gigabyte file and tried copying it over to the desktop of both OS's. Speeding things along here, Windows 11 finishes copying everything over first, then around 10 seconds later, Windows 10 finishes up doing the same thing. Just like before, here's the total amount of copying time for both operating systems if you're interested. Finally, before we get to the benchmarks, we've got a virus scanning test. I'll admit I did run into some issues with this test in particular, and I had to do some reinstallations of Malwarebytes, which is the software we're using, so just keep that in mind. It won't be as accurate as the other tests. Nevertheless, after the scan was run at at the same time in both operating systems, Windows 11 completes the entire thing first, Windows 10 needing around 21 more seconds to complete the test, so there you go. And now it's time for the benchmarks. This time we've got a lot more software we're going to work with unlike previous videos, starting off with Geekbench 5. In single core performance, Windows 10 scored a 471 while Windows 11 scored a 472, a one point difference between both operating systems. Same goes with multi-core performance, Windows 10 scores a 1905 while Windows 11 scores a 1906, a one point difference once 
once again. Technically speaking, Windows 11 does win in Geekbench, but practically speaking, they're basically the same thing. Moving on to our next benchmark, CPU-Z, in single-threaded performance, Windows 10 scores a 195.1 and Windows 11 scores a 195.7, less than a 1-point lead for Windows 11. Multi-threaded scores are a bit more interesting, Windows 10 takes the edge here by scoring a 1003.1, while Windows 11 scores a 1001.7, almost a 1.5-point gap. Again, just like the Geekbench scores, these 1-point gaps don't really make that much of a difference. Next benchmark I tried was Crystal Disk Mark, this one specifically measured the performance of your hard drive or in this case, your SSD, and we'll appear the results. There are too many categories to cover here, but here's a general overview of what I found, and if you want to look at specific results, you can pause the video here. So, in terms of reading, Windows 11 generally performs either slightly better than or just as good as Windows 10. However, looking at the other side of things, Windows 11 had a significant deficiency in writing compared to Windows 10. If you were waiting for something interesting to happen, then, well, you got what you wanted. I also wanted to conduct a Wi-Fi speed test using speedtest.net. Instead of taking the best of 10 tests, which is what I did in my previous comparisons, I tested each operating system five times and averaged out the upload and download speed on both. In terms of download speed, Windows 10 averaged to 88.078 megabits per second and Windows 11 averaged to 93.692 megabits per second, giving Windows 11 the win here. However, testing the upload speed was a completely different story. Windows 10 scored 88.784 megabits per second while Windows 11 performed worse at 80.438 megabits per second. Pretty strange. Alright, now let's move on to something more graphics intensive, starting with Cinebench, a very heavy benchmark especially for this hardware. After running the single core benchmark on both operating systems, Windows 10 loses out here by scoring a 439 compared to the higher 450 that Windows 11 scores. However, multi-core score was a different story. Windows 10 receives a 230... not 233. 2033 versus 2003 on Windows 11, a 30 point difference. Last benchmark before we get to conclusions is Superposition. This benchmark was offered in multiple different resolutions and graphical effects, so first let's cover it when it's run at 720p low graphics. Windows 10 scores in 1892 and Windows 11 beats it out with a 1943. I also repeated the same benchmark with 1080p medium settings and Windows 10 loses again with a 675 versus the 694 on Windows 11. And that's all the benchmarks. So let's try and make a reasonable conclusion out of this, just note mine is not the end-all be-all of conclusions, you can draw your own if you want, but I just want to give my own input. Based on what I call the real-world test, which is everything but the benchmarks, Windows 10 won almost every single one. Startup, storage, memory, battery, video editing, opening applications, like a ton of them. There were just very few exceptions. However, I wouldn't say that Windows 10 like completely destroyed Windows 11 or anything like that. They were still actually very, very close in performance, except for memory. If you're running Windows 11 on hardware with very low memory, or if you care a lot about memory in general, I would be cautious around Windows 11. It does take up quite a bit more RAM than its predecessor. Now, if we move to the more technical stuff, which are the benchmarks and the numbers, this is where things get a bit more confusing. Windows 11 did some things better than Windows 10, and Windows 10 did some things better than Windows 11. There really isn't any consistency here. I guess the best thing I can say in regard to the benchmarks is that if you're doing low-level single-core tasks, Windows 11 does a slightly better job doing that. On the other hand, Windows 10 does a slightly better job doing multi-core related tasks. However, again, the difference in performance is minuscule. Overall though, if I had to choose one winner, it would have to be Windows 10. It either outperforms or does just as well as Windows 11 in the majority of my tests, but I'm sticking to my same old statement. Don't choose an operating system solely for its performance. First priority should be its features and reliability. Speed should come afterwards. So hopefully this video gives a better idea on how performance compares on both Windows 10 and 11. Like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.